Hey, how's it going people? Brown Brady here and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to adjust the rear suspension on a Honda CBR 250R and why anyone would want to do this. A subscriber requested this video a while back, thank you, and at first I thought it was going to be a challenge because I've never done it before. I didn't have the tools and I did not completely understand why anyone would want to do it. But eventually I found out that it was very easy to do and my bike came with the tools to make this job possible. The rear suspension is located here and it's a little tight but you should be able to make the adjustment from either side of the bike. I prefer to adjust it from the muffler side because I don't want to damage the chain in case the pin spanner slips. But if you plan to do it this way, just be careful not to burn yourself if the muffler is still hot. First, let me show you how the pin spanner works on my Nighthawk where it's more visible because it's very tight and dark where the uh, rear suspension is located on my CBR. It's basically a special wrench that has a tooth on one end and that tooth hooks onto one of the grooves um, which provides the necessary grip to allow you to turn and adjust a spring like this. And I didn't know this until I made this video but the word spanner is the British English standard term for what we call wrench here in North America. Anyway, so uh, now let's try it on Bobcat. The adjuster has five settings from one to five where position one is soft and it progressively gets harder to position five. According to the manual, adjusting directly from 1 to 5 can damage the shock absorber, but it does not explain what you should do. I interpret this as it is okay to adjust it from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, and 1 to 4. I think it's just to give the shock absorber time to gradually expand and contract. So why would you want to change the suspension settings in the first place? Well, to keep it simple, a softer setting increases riding comfort so that your spine absorbs less of the energy transfer from bumps but takes less additional load for the suspension to bottom out. On the other hand, a stiffer setting will be capable of taking on a heavier load before the suspension bottoms out, but will provide a less comfortable ride. There are also other factors to consider including the effects of traction, ride height, and geometry, but that would be beyond the scope of this video. But I found this helpful article that explains the effects of preload and sag. Personally, I just leave it at position 2. Anyway, that just about does it for this episode. I'm sure there'll be some of you out there who are more knowledgeable with regards to spring preload and sag, so if you have anything to contribute, please share them in the comments section. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, or better yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next video. As always, ride safe, and thanks for watching. You look like a bobblehead.